so it's 6 a.m. and it's uh, Thursday morning today. I am taking this 1952 AJS down to auction today. Um, there's a big auction happening on Saturday in Calgary. It's called the Okotoks Car Auction. It's a really big um, auction. They have mainly vintage cars, but also old motorcycles and memorabilia and stuff like that. So. I've decided um, with winter coming, I don't need as many bikes in the shop as I've had. So off goes the AJS. So we're gonna we got that loaded up in the van, and yes, uh, like I've showed before, you can actually fit motorcycles in minivans, and fits just fine. You can see it's got like a I don't know, probably like a foot and a half of room in there still. Um, and I've got some old signs back there too. So we're off to Calgary. Um, might stop and check out some cool stores down there. But uh, first stop is gonna be off to the auction to drop this bike off. So here we go. And I probably should have checked the weather before I left because we had super thick fog. Now, this is in the city driving out of town. I can only hope that things get better once I get out of the highway. Well, let's go find out. And no, things did not get any better on the highway. In fact, they got way worse. Visibility was maybe 20 feet really tough to see and it was like this for the first hour and a half of the journey. This was my view out the front window. Not the greatest view, but moments like these you just press on and keep driving. So I'm going to move forward and get to my destination. So thankfully the fog has lifted, the sun is starting to come up and I'm about halfway there. So it was a pretty thick fog for the first hour and a half of this trip, but uh, looking forward to the next little journey and hopefully it's not so bad traveling from here on out. And I arrived at my destination. When it's not hosting car auctions, it is actually a full-time show jumping horse arena built in 1976 just outside Calgary. And I was pretty amused by the type of stop signs they use here at the arena as well. Pretty cool. So after getting a little bit lost, I did find the right hall. <laughs> this is going to be the home of the auction tomorrow. So I've got to pull my vehicle around, offload the motorcycle and the memorabilia, and then um, go cruise around Calgary and see what there is to see. So the bike is offloaded. I just had the ramp run right into the back of my van and in it is. So here is my 52 AJS 500 single and yes, we are putting it up. No reserve at this auction. So with any luck, we'll get some good interest out of it. It's a beautiful looking bike and just had a bunch of work done to it. So kind of a risk going no reserve, but uh, you know, we'll give it a try. So I'm all registered and ready to go. Here's a, two of the signs that I brought in. This original Whip It Willie's night sign. It's porcelain and double sided. And the other one is a uh, dependable used car from a dealership. I believe it's 50s or 60s. It's kind of nice because it's got the Canadian maple leaf on there. And it's porcelain as well. So we're going to have a look around and uh, see what some of the cars are. It's still early, so not all the cars are here. They're expecting 72 cars and 100 lots total. So uh, we'll walk around and I'll show you what's showed up so far. And I am a sucker for porcelain signs, uh, especially the big ones like this. They look great in a garage or on a wall. Um, so they've got a Kendall. That would be an American one that somebody's brought up double-sided golf, the mobile oil. So there's a few interesting signs here. These big Texaco are actually kind of hard to come by. Uh, if you recall in the video when I took the, got the ambulance from Winnipeg, we hauled one of these big Texaco signs out there. Um, and yes, we did have it screwed down to a trailer. Somebody thought I just drove with a sign on the flat deck with, without it being stuck to a trailer. That would have been nuts. Uh, but that's like the one I hauled out. So some cool signs, a couple of pedal cars. Let's go look at some of the cars. And looks like a Porsche 928. Found one of these actually uh, in a back alley near my house not that long ago, about a week ago. And uh, might go knock on the guy's door and see if he wants to sell it. And some Jags and stuff, so nice little Camaro. This one is a RS SS. So he's got all the, the build sheet and everything for it, which is always nice. Very clean looking car, nice looking engine. The interior looks good too. Hmm. It's probably about a 69 to 72 Chev C10. And this one's a four wheel drive too, so a little bit more desirable. It's four wheel drive short box. It looks in very nice shape. In terms of trucks, these are going to be pretty collectible, these ones. And you can drive them pretty much anywhere too. It's a nice old Suburban. Possibly four wheel drive. So it's sitting up pretty high. Great looking vehicle. Nice little MGB, 
probably about a 72. It's got the three wiper blades on it. I've owned several of these old MGs, drove them all year round. Great little car. And here's a cool looking car. I believe this is a Ranchero GT. Custom paint jobs, got a little canopy on the back. You don't see too many of these around anymore. It's another Camaro, this time a convertible. This will be in nice condition, it's got the red lines on it. I love these kind of turquoise paint jobs on here. I mean, it looks fantastic. The interior looks great on this too. And a nice little Camaro's pulled in. You can see there's lots of empty spots. Every, every place where there's a cardboard marker is where there's gonna be a car. I got here super early in the morning, so there's not many cars here yet. Little Pontiac Le Mans. Probably a similar vintage to my ambulance, really. You think of what a behemoth my ambulance is compared to the nice sporty little Le Mans there. If you recall the Kaisers I found in the scrapyard. Nobody's there. Those, Those I believe, I are, believe Kaisers. are Kaisers. The back window there. This one looks to be in not bad shape. Chrome looks pretty decent, paint's not too bad. It's got mismatched rear hubcaps on it, but it's no reserve. I might bid on it if it's uh, gonna go cheap enough. And here's a nice vintage Ferrari. Looks pretty clean. I know the maintenance can be a little challenging on these guys. I've got a friend that has a 308 and I don't think I've ever seen him drive it because I think he's worried about the timing belt. But it's in this kind of shape too. He just has it sitting in his house. But this one's a 348 TS. Yeah, it looks pretty clean. So everything's loaded up in the auction house there. Now it's just the waiting game to see how it does tomorrow. So I unfortunately have to work, so I can't stick around and watch this auction, but I am going to maybe watch it from uh, the store while I'm working. Um, Hopefully, fingers crossed, you know, we'll do okay on it, but it's always a gamble when you put something up for no reserve. But apparently they're getting lots of interest in it, and it is the only motorcycle at the sale, which can be a good thing and a bad thing, but uh, we'll see. But I'm going to go off and explore Calgary a little bit while I'm in town, and uh, then head home. And while I was out here, I did manage to find a really cool Model T to bring home. Well, maybe it wasn't a full-scale Model T, but a really cool replica. So I'm at work right now, and I'm watching the live auction on my phone. So with any luck, um, the bike will come up and go for good money. I'm keeping my fingers crossed. Some of the stuff is going a little bit low, so let's see and uh, watch how things go. So as the first few things came up, the prices were about what I expected they'd be and get very close to retail and what I had them priced at in the store. So I was pretty happy with that. When we started to get into the cars, I saw that some of them were going for decent money. When you look at the restoration costs, some of these prices weren't that bad really. The Kaiser actually only went for $5,500 and considering its shape was not bad. But my auction is coming up right away, so let's start watching and see how it's going to do. The first bids start rolling in and it sits at $50 for a long time. When other bids start to roll in and it quickly jumps up to $2,750 and then right up to $3,500. But things started to stall and ultimately it ended up going for $4,200 Canadian. Well, I watched the auction and it sat at like $50 forever and then it started to go up. But uh, sadly, it sold for 4,200 Canadian. Um, it's like half of what I had into the bike. And honestly, the, the bike was worth probably, you know, $8,000 or so. It was nicely restored. Um, so not the right venue, but I can't beat myself up too much about it. Uh, it's the risk you take in an auction. And yes, it really sucks to lose four grand. Um, but I have to stay positive. And, um, you know, honestly, well, how I'm gonna look at it is I'm gonna take that money if I can go out and buy eight grand worth of stuff for four grand um, for the store, I'll feel like it was a fair trade. So I'm probably just gonna go back out and just reinvest that money back into the shop and uh, try and get some cool stuff here. So um, yeah, a bit of a bummer today. I did good on my signs though. Like my signs did about exactly what I thought they'd do. Um, so in all, just the bike was a letdown, but uh, what are you gonna do? So um, thanks for watching these videos. I really appreciate it. Uh, thanks for tuning in. If you like these videos, please subscribe. We do these videos every week or two. There's usually something going on. Um, and uh, yeah, you can also check us out on our website, uh, curiosityedmonton.ca, Facebook, uh, Curiosity Incorporated, or on Instagram, uh, curiosityinkyeg. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks for tuning in. Bye for now.